Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I want to share with you the resources that we use for our Ancient Rome main lesson block. Now I have a lot of books and activities here to share with you, but I also want to break this down so that it's a little bit more manageable for you if you wanted to do uh, any kind of main lesson block or unit study. I have a few books here that I think would work really well to put together a, a unit study on ancient Rome without being overwhelmed by all of the resources that we have because we have been doing this for many years and every year that we do this or every time this main lesson block rolls around I get excited again and I go looking for more resources and you don't need to do that so I have plenty here that we have used in the past that we didn't use this time and other things that we did not have before that I absolutely love so I'm going to walk you through this as quickly as I can and don't forget that you can check out the complete playlist of all the activities that we have done at any time during this video you can just tap on the screen on that little card playlist and that link is also at the end of this video as well as down in the description box below all right so the first thing i want to show you are the lesson plans that i created for this unit you can also find a link to these lesson plans down in the description box below you can find them looking like this and you can also find them as lesson plans on homeschool panda so go ahead and check those out. There are changes that I made throughout this whole main lesson block, and that's going to happen no matter how much you plan ahead, there are going to be changes. Okay, so we're getting through our lesson plans, and we're at Wednesday here, but we're not done with reading our chapters in Ancient Rome by Charles Kovacs, and so we're going to work on that today. All right, so let me put these aside and also show you the main lesson book that we were basing this whole unit off of. And this is the live education main lesson block for ancient Roman history. And this comes with a ton of information for you to put together this main lesson block, but it also has a number of additional resources that are suggested in this book so that you can really add more background information to your lessons. And the book that is recommended is The Early History of Rome by Livy. And I did not use this book at all. I used other resource guides instead that were a little bit more engaging and were they were able to be read alouds rather than a resource that I would read first and digest the information and then present it to my students in language that was also lively and engaging and whatnot. So this is the book that is recommended for this, but I want to show you two other resources that I really like. And, and actually, I'm just going to go ahead and do that first. I'm going to put this stack aside for a minute. These were all of the historical fiction that my student read. There's, uh, this book is the tale of the time of Nero. We didn't get to this one at all. This, the, the, the text is really small. I'll, I'll just have to, I want to preface this actually with a couple of words on how I purchase my material, why I purchase it, why I share it, and how we go about putting together our unit studies. I think this is, this has been said before, but I think it's uh, worth saying one more time. Uh, I have a, kind of a love-hate relationship with purchasing material online. It is super easy, which I love, but it is super difficult to find out really what the book is going to be like. And seeing the cover like this, it looks like it's something that we could probably read pretty easily. And then you open it up and you're like, wow, my child is not going to read that. That is way too dense. This is high school or college level or read aloud level for a child that's going to be super interested in this kind of content. So we purchased this one new for this unit and didn't get to it at all because once I saw the inside, I realized this is just not going to work for us. So why did I purchase this in the first place? Why am I sharing it with you now? One of the reasons why I try to show you as many resources as possible and show you the inside and show you how many pages and show you what age level it's going to be good for and whether this is going to be a read aloud or something you can assign to your student is because I find it so difficult to make that decision when you are purchasing things online. Since we receive funding for our homeschool material through our charter school, if something doesn't work out, it's not a big deal. Give it back to the school, some other family is going to use it. If I had to purchase all these things out of pocket, I would be way more hesitant and really disappointed if a book didn't work out. But for us here, I can at least get the value of showing you this book and letting you know this didn't work out for us and these are the reasons why it didn't, but it certainly could work out for your family based now on the extra information that I can provide for you that you may not be able to find online. 
All right, so we didn't use that one and we also didn't use this one. This one, I believe I picked up on my own from the library bookstore one year. And so it was, I had intended to read this ahead of time. Well, I kind of knew that probably wasn't gonna happen, but I had good intentions of trying to do that, but it didn't work out. Instead, I wanna show you two awesome resources that you could use that would be, I think, equivalent to the previous resources that I showed you, but they would be great either read-alouds or assigned reading to your student. So th both of these are fantastic. Let me show you the inside. This is called The Story of the Romans, and we did not intend to read the whole book because we we just knew going into this unit with six weeks, we weren't going to be able to finish all of the books cover to cover that we had that I had pulled. And it was my intention, I think, to only get to chapter 60 or chapter 80. We ended up reading the entire book. I know that the bookmark is here, but from this point on, my son read it to himself. And up to this point, I read the book aloud to him. It's that good, but... I want to also say a couple of things about it. We read this the last time we did our, our ancient Roman main lesson block. And I believe at that time, I might have only assigned three weeks for this. Currently, the entire playlist is as one playlist, even though part of it, the beginning part of the playlist approximately, are the things, the activities, how we put together the unit study from... I think 2016, maybe 2015. I apologize, I don't remember. It might have been a six week main lesson block that I cut into two, three week main lesson blocks. I apologize for not remembering, but thankfully I recorded the whole process. So at least it's documented that way. This time around, I realized that, okay, this is just way too much information. I don't think we're gonna be able to get through it all but we ended up getting through it all, which is a total surprise because we didn't get through some of the other resources that we had lined up. New for this unit is Ancient Rome by Charles Kovacs. I've really been enjoying the books by Charles Kovacs. This is written by a Waldorf teacher, and actually this was compiled after his death. He had all these notes for his for the class, for the lessons, and they were compiled into this book, which for a lot of reasons, I really like it. Number one, the chapters are really short, which makes it a, an, a, an appropriate length for a single lesson for a day. You could certainly combine these, but I found that just doing one chapter a day was sufficient. And then it allowed us time to do some of the other books that we wanted to do, as well as like the writing portion for our main lesson block and other things. So I thought, well, I really want to get through this book because we haven't gotten through this book before, but we have read this book before. So I also didn't want to overload us. We ended up reading almost this entire book as well. So two big surprises for this unit. So I think the big question remains is which book is better? I'm going to put those in air quotes. Which book is better, this one or this one? If you had to only choose between the two, even though they're both tremendous. They're both of great value, and both of these would make a great uh, basic book for the entire unit. Like, this is the complete history for ancient Rome. And uh, and so I lost my train of thought, but basically, uh, which one is better? <laughs> that's, that's the question. And that was really hard to decide, because here's the thing. The content in both of these is going to be extremely similar, of course, because it's the same history. But what I noticed is that on occasion, this book would go into better detail about a particular uh, historical event. And then at other times, this book would go into better detail about a historical event. Overall, I found that the chapters that had more detail, which is a surprise, we ended up liking them better, especially since we could compare between the two books. So if since we went back and forth between them over the course of this whole entire unit, which it lasted far longer than six weeks, we were able to have a refresher. Whatever book we read second was kind of a refresher and a, and a review of the book that we had re read previously. And sometimes there'd be more details and sometimes there would be less details. And I found that overall, we both enjoyed the one that had more details versus the one that had less details. This book was written, I think about a hundred years ago. I cannot remember right now. Uh, 1896. So 
over a hundred years ago, and it was it's an, it's an, the, uh, it is written for a Christian audience, and I'm assuming also by a Christian. And, but it does not have religious content. So this is still a secular book in my opinion. However, it does make, and I, for the fun of it, we would highlight parts where it was either author bias or you could tell that it was written for a Christian audience. And those were just opportunities for us to just remark that, you know, we recognize that. And the thing that I found, uh, and you know what? That didn't actually deter from the content. I'm going to say the thing that I found interesting a little bit. This book was written recently, but the notes were compiled. These class notes were compiled over a period of time over, I want to say, the past 30 to 40 years. So definitely, you know, uh, not as old. And also from the... I, I This is Waldorf-inspired, clearly. So from, I guess... The Waldorf perspective. I don't know exactly if you can say that for a historical uh, text, except that there there's uh, there's less bias on the historical events, but there may be, or for sure, there will be bias on other aspects of the author's opinion about life, for instance. But for the historical events, you will find less bias. So as an example, here's the thing that I found interesting. In this book, and I apologize for spending so much time doing this, but you can get minute markers down in the description box below for each of the different sections that I'm going to go over today because no matter how much I decide, hey, I'm not going to spend so much time talking about all these books, I end up talking a lot about all these books. So the interesting thing that I want to remark about earlier is that you can definitely see author bias from the Christian point of view, especially when it comes to things about character and about different crimes. Uh, the crimes primarily are those of self-inflicted crimes, that of suicide. So here, because that was something that was definitely done often during the Roman times, rather than be captured, tortured, or tried by the enemy, you, uh, it was more honorable to kill yourself. And so many, on many occasions, people chose to just kill themselves or ask their slaves to kill them or ask their friends to kill them. And the author makes mention how you know that that is a crime and, uh, and maybe even like, uh, you know, that for civilized people, you know, for Christians, it's a crime to do that. So that, that is going to be present as well as remarks about heathens versus civilized people and looking at old practices as being backwards and heathen. That was also mentioned, which personally I didn't care for as much because I felt that was a little bit more biased and, and a little bit racist. But the point about a crime, like suicide being a crime, that's directly related from the religion. So I didn't have a problem with that as much as, as more of as the other comments. So anyway, in this book, you're not going to find that because it looked at history a little bit more unbiased because it's not from a Christian point of view. It's just from like a, just th these are the facts. But it, with a more critical eye, you could see other biases. So which book wins out if you could only buy one book as your spine for your unit study on ancient Roman history? Ooh, why don't you guys take the poll? That will be fun. A little poll is popping up right now. Go ahead and take the poll and decide which book you would prefer or, you know, which book you think I would choose as the winner. And uh, you can also leave that down in the comment section below just for fun. I am going to reveal my choice at the end of this video. I know I'm going to do that, but hey, if you want to see right away what I chose, then you can find that minute marker down in the description box below. It's popping up on the screen right now as I'm speaking, and you can just jump to that point in the video and check it out, and then later you can come back and finish watching this video. So I'm going to let you know about that in just a little bit. Also, at the end of this video, I also want to show you my child's main lesson book. This is all the work that he did for this unit. I'm going to show you that at the end. Let me jump into one of the more boring stacks of books. Boring, I say. Uh, they're probably not boring. Uh, these are all of the historical fiction that my child read, except he didn't read this bottom one. So there are th these top historical fiction here. These are all, I would say they border on twaddle, I believe is the word, if you're, if you're a Charlotte Mason fan and uh, use that kind of philosophy. I would say that these just you know, they were filler books and 
and in part I regret having them but also in part I don't mind that he got a little bit of history in here. The, uh, these two were new for this unit. I don't remember where I got this one. Maybe it was a hand-me-down. Maybe I bought it. I don't remember. This was from the library bookstore. The reason why I have these in here is because I do like to look for historical fiction for our unit studies and our main lesson blocks. I think it's a great way to add some reading that's going to be uh, educational as well as it just being, you know, reading. The reason why I did... And the reason why I didn't like these as much is because I don't think that the quality was that great. I think the stories were really simple. I think that the historical content was just really basic. And the problem is that it set my son up for, uh, it negatively set my son up for the remainder of the unit for the other books that I wanted him to read. This is not the only thing that set himself, negatively set himself up. Uh, there's another thing that I'm gonna talk about in a little bit. But you can see that the this would be great if you had a really reluctant reader and you really wanted to bring something that was interesting and engaging, then these books would work. Here are the books that were more his grade level, The Ides of April, which uh, we I read, this was a read aloud that I read the first time we did this unit. The White Isle, this again was a read aloud that I did the first time that we did this unit, but he read both of these. Caesar's Gaelic Wars, he did not finish. He had a hard time getting through this one. Triumph for Flavius was super, super easy. I'd, I put this back with the other books that were considered twaddle. The Silver Branch, he didn't read because I believe this was book two of a trilogy and he just didn't really, wasn't able to really get into it without having book one, so he didn't read this one. And Between Forest and between the Forest and the Hills, this was a book that was supposed to be a read aloud the first time we did this unit, and I would have chosen this as a read aloud this time around, but we, I didn't get to it for all the other reading that we did, and he didn't get to it, even though I think that he probably could have handled this book really easily compared to some of the other uh, uh, nonfiction that I had for him. So the reason why, the other reason why having, well, the other reason why having these books was difficult and also a good thing is because none of these books are going to compare to the books that my son gets from the library. And going to the library this year has been a huge problem because he will get like 15 books at a time and he will do nothing but read those books. He won't do anything else. And for me, that's a problem because those books are not going to be um, academic. They're not engaging. The, the quality of the language isn't that great. It's just, uh, you know, there can be too much reading at some time, you know, sometimes. And so, and th the quality of those books isn't con compared to the ones that we're doing. And it's not going to be the content that we're doing for our main lesson block. So all of a sudden, all these books here that he could have read easily, suddenly he was dragging his feet on reading them and really being difficult about reading these books because he wanted to read books in the library. So we had to really pull back from going to the library in order for these other books to all of a sudden be, oh, there's nothing else to read. I might as well read these. But at the same time, having some of these books available meant like, oh, these kind of compete with the books that I'm interested in from the library. So then these ones were kind of like that gateway book into the unit. So they were interesting enough to kind of be like, oh, okay, I want to know a little bit more. So you can see there's like pros and cons to them and you really have to figure out what's best for you and your family. These are things that I have had to deal with this whole entire school year and I do not have a good solution. The library is just more interesting than these books. All right, let me put these aside and go on to the next stack. All right, before I get into this one, actually, I do want to show you these five books here that were the nonfiction that I had assigned to my son. This is Children's Plutarch, and this is going to be way easier than the other the other book that I had assigned for our ancient Greece unit that was Plutarch straight up. It was way too challenging for my son to get through. This was a lot easier, but he... I honestly cannot remember whether he got to reading this one or not. We started to go through all of the books and I had him give me some uh, some of his views on all of the books that, that I assigned him, but we didn't get through all of them. The Aeneid for Boys and Girls, he did read this one. It was pretty simple. You can see that for both of these books, um, that the content, let me pull them open, the, the size of the letters, the the types of the sentences, all of this I think is the right book for my son. He is 11 and this is this is a good uh, level for him. 
Some of the ones that were not, was this one one? Um, actually, was it this one? As the letter, as the lettering gets smaller and more dense, it just turns him off and he just feels like he's just not going to enjoy it as much. And it's probably true. This was, he didn't read this one, but he did read this one. And this was a little bit shorter, had some uh, pictures, some some illustrations, uh, and the I think this the font size was pretty similar. So he did read this one. He did read this one. I think he read this one, but I I have to ask him. It's popping up on the screen right now. Don't worry, you'll know. Uh, and this one he didn't read, although he totally could read this one. But there's no way that I'm gonna be able to get him to read it now because this unit is over. But if I really wanted to go over this, which that whole part of ancient Roman history was really well written and de it was written in detail in both of the resources that I read aloud. So I'm not too flustered about going back into this. This one I really, really wanted him to read because a lot of these figures in history, uh, Caesar, Augustus, uh, these ones were, because they came later on in Roman history, we, I didn't intend to go through the the end of the Republic and most of the Empire as much just based on how much we were going to read because ancient Roman history is kind of broken up into three sections. We did a lot with the, the seven kings. We went into the Republic and then and the basics of, you know, Rome, the, the architecture, the, the roads and things like that. But then I knew that we weren't going to really get into the fall of Rome and the Empire and some of the uh, I'm going to just say it. I have an opinion that some of the crazy rulers <laughs> of the of the Roman Empire towards the end. And so I wanted him to read about them in here. And he did, I think, get to all of them except for the last couple. And he didn't find this one that interesting. But I do think that this was a good resource. All right. So let me put those aside and get into some of these books here. This. OK, so I apologize. I just want to pull the ones that I think um, I think all all four of these books would be if if you needed something on Hannibal, I would suggest this one. If you needed a nonfiction book to add to like a single only one nonfiction book to add to your unit, I would suggest this one. If you felt that this the content you know was going to be a little bit too challenging for your child, then I would recommend. Um, I think Hannibal's story is a little bit more interesting than the other two, although the Aeneid is also interesting. I want to put those out there that these will fall into my top pick for nonfiction, assigned reading, or read alouds. Yeah. Okay. So this is also a book that I would recommend to you. Uh, you know, any picture book that has content as well as some really nice illustrations, I think is going to be a good addition because this doesn't have too much. And especially if you're going to have multiple students in your homeschool, this is going to be great for all of your younger students because it's going to keep them engaged. It's not going to be too much information. It's probably going to be written in a more engaging manner than some of the other books that you're going to have if you have older students. But at the same time, this is going to be enjoyable for your older students as well. Older elementary into junior high and even young high school, I would consider that your older students. So I really, really like adding picture books into our units because it's going, in general, I feel like they're really well written and they're engaging and they have the, the, the pictures or the illustrations and it's usually written for a younger audience and so it's not so difficult to comprehend what is being said and uh, it also gives you a nice bird's eye view of the entire history. So I put this one also in my recommended pile. We also have the DKI Witness Ancient Rome book, and we use this one extensively the first time we did our Ancient Rome main lesson block, but we did not use it this time around. In general, it, it I find them a little bit dry because I used to be reading two pages every day or even four pages every day for the duration of our unit, and it just, that wasn't the best approach for this kind of book. I think these books are amazing resources, especially if you just need content for a particular part of history or science science, you know, whatever the topic of the book, then definitely then this book is going to be helpful that way. It also came with a poster that we had up in our homeschool room and that was really nice. It also comes with a CD which we have never used, but there is also the clip art CD as well. 
All right, this is a book that I would recommend. This is the Osborne's Romans book. And this is another book that's going to have like a great overview for all of ancient Roman history. It's going to go through all of the, the, the non-history as well, like the mythology and the architecture and the culture and the food and all of those things that is, for me, that's like the, the meat on the bones. Like the bones is like the history, but it's, it's so dry without anything else. And so, plus this book is just really beautifully illustrated. This is the first book that my son just, he was just reading it. He was just, I was preparing the unit and he would just be reading this and looking through the different uh, pictures and, and it's just a great way to introduce the unit. So uh, this is one that I would definitely recommend if you're putting together a unit and you want it to be a little bit more tidy and not have so many resources as I do, I would recommend this one. All right, uh, I did not have a lot of mythology books. Usually I have more on the religion and the culture and the mythology, but for this one, I just had two books. This one we picked up from the library bookstore. I think it's a really beautifully illustrated book and it goes over uh, King Midas and the Golden Touch. We also had this workbook here that goes through the ancient Greek and Roman mythology. It also came with some work workbook pages, but I, we've already used this one, so I didn't have any of them in here except for a couple here and there. We did not use this one this time. We did use it before. It was great to have something like this if you needed to have like some, you know, paper, uh, physical thing to show for your unit, then this was nice to have on hand for that. Okay, I have a couple of books that would, well, we like them. They have a math perspective to them. This is Ancient Civilizations for Greece and Rome, Solving Algebraic Equations. And my son read this one during our Ancient Greek unit, which was preceded the Roman unit. And he did not care for the math at all. And the thing is, I really like it when books do this. They'll, they'll incorporate naturally another subject into whatever subject this is. So this is history and it's naturally incorporating math. I think it's brilliant and I'm so sad that it didn't work out for us, but I still just really value this book. And then we have a book on Roman numerals and this is one that we just pulled. We had this for our math unit and we pulled this one out. It's super simple and it's just, you know, something that we pulled out when we went through Roman numerals. Uh, before I get to the other books, I want to show you a couple of the projects, or not projects, just additional things that we had for this unit. All right, so I want to show you a couple of the additional things that we had for this unit. A lot of the things that we had were on display in our homeschool room. I do not have them here to show you right now, but we did have... Gosh, I think this is back from the very first time we did this unit. There may have been more pieces, but these are the tube characters, and this is for ancient Rome. And so we just had these around, and the kids weren't as into them this time around. And also, my kids are funny in that when they when they do their pretend play, they'll have like ancient Roman figures and Wild West figures and then their peg dolls and then Kapla blocks and then all they mix everything together. So I think that these are really neat educational toys, but I find that my kids just play with them and they they don't play with this person as a gladiator. They just play with all of these toys. So anyway, I just want to let you know that there are two toys for this unit. We also had... Uh, this is by Jim Weiss. This is an audio retelling of Julius Caesar and the story of Rome. And it's it was really well done. It goes into, it has like a really long intro and then it goes into a retelling of Julius Caesar and, uh, sorry, William Shakespeare's Julius Caesar. I really like the Jim Weiss CDs. I think they're well done. I think he's a great narrator, um, a, an oral storyteller, but I have to say that my older two kids enjoyed Jim Weiss far more than my younger two. My younger two are really just not into it as much. All right, I also want to show you the mosaic that we did. This, the, mo the idea of a mosaic came 
from this book and this is called Classical Kids and it has all kinds of really simple projects that you can do. And so the mosaic was actually just a paper mosaic and we did one also, but our paper mosaic wasn't that great. It's already been recycled, but of course I have a video on it, but I really like what we did with the tile mosaic. We used a tile set that was for a different image and then it's hard to see, but these are this is actually the aqueduct here. It was a little bit hard to do this with the colors that came in the kit because it wasn't intended for an aqueduct, but I still really like being able to do that because it's something that we did in our previous unit. The last time we did this, only we, we got a kit that was specifically, I think, for a sundial and it was a mosaic kit and it worked really well for this unit. Overall, this book has a lot of really, really simple projects that you can do that, that you don't need any special equipment for. So this would be another book that I highly recommend. Before I show you the other activity books, I do want to show you this game. This is the Professor Noggins game and I did not have this one. I cannot believe I didn't have this one. I borrowed this one from a friend when I saw it at her house and I'm like, can I please borrow it? We're in the middle of our unit and she said yes. And so basically this goes through multiple ancient civilizations. So I believe it's Greece and the Aztecs and the Romans and the Egyptians. There may be more, I, I'm not sure. And these have amazingly beautiful illustrations on the front. And then on the back, there are two sets of questions, an easy set and a hard set. You roll the dice to see which question you're gonna get. And we really enjoy playing these games. We have them for a lot of our units. And also they're really great even if you're not doing this particular unit because it's a great way to refresh the information and review it and just kind of test to see how much you remember. So this one is not mine. I'm giving it back to my friend, but this is definitely going on my wish list because I love all the Professor Noggins games. I think they're great additions to any unit. This is a, a project that we did the last time we did this unit this is a timeline and it's funny because my son who is 11 now I think this one was his uh, so he did that one a few years ago yeah this is my my son my older son who is now 16 I think he was 13 when he just did this one I I'm sorry I cannot remember but my 11 year old what was funny was that I think he was nine when he did this or eight nine maybe he said that the timeline really helped him when it came to uh, the content this time around because he literally remembers things better because he did them in a timeline. So I was so happy and pleased that something that we did the last time we did this unit came in handy this time around and also is evidence that sometimes the drawing, the writing, the hands-on projects, however long they take, however much more involved they, they are, they really do have lasting effects for the children. So I'm really happy that that actually came in handy. Um, we also have a couple of maps here that I believe these ones are from Rainbow Re Resource. It came with a total of four. I only have two of them right here. We did use them this time around. There were other ones that were more specific for the Mediterranean area. They are in the schoolroom right now. I do highly recommend getting these ones because also these ones, the historical maps aren't going to have the same borders that you're going to find for today's maps. And they're also going to have the names of the areas that were uh, like the names of the cities or the provinces that were present it at that time and so having a historical map is also going to be really helpful and we did use those before i get to the other books i have two three things to show you this is a a coliseum project that you assemble we did this one last time we did not intend to do this one again there was just no need to do it again but it does come with other ones so if we went if we had any of these other uh, units, we would definitely get this again. This was a little bit challenging to do, but in the end, always in the end, my kids are happy that we either got a project like this or that we did a project like this or that I got in there and I helped them with them. So uh, that's something that if you were looking for a hands-on project, that one was one that we enjoyed. Historium is a book that's new for us this year and we only needed a small section here and I believe... I cannot remember what we were using this as art inspiration. It might have been the mosaics. I don't remember, but we, we only used a couple of pages in here, which is not surprising because this book is going to go through so many different time periods and uh, so we in different cultures. And so we didn't obviously need to go through the whole thing because we were just doing ancient Rome. 
All right, so let me go through this stack of books here. These are like different activity books and I already showed you classical kids. We also have tools of ancient Romans and I had intended to do this entire book in the last week of our unit and we didn't get to it at all in part because we were doing other projects and also because we ended up reading those two resources a lot more than than we expected. But I really do like books like this because this one doesn't just have content, but it also has projects. And I should have also clarified that this one also does include some content, not a lot, but just enough to give the project some context. So this one we did in its entirety the last time we did this unit, but I do not remember if we did the activities from this book. A lot of the activities you're going to find repeated in different activity books. So while we may have done some of these, it may not have been as direct inspiration from this book. But this is, if, if you had to choose one activity book, I would choose Classical Kids over Tools of Ancient of the ancient Romans. But the reason why I still find this to be a great value is because of uh, all the content that's included in this book. So if you needed something that had uh, history and, you know, culture and stuff, then I would, I would say this one. Then it includes a couple of projects that are still fairly simple. History Pockets. Now we have, we have History Pockets for a lot of different uh, time periods, but we, rarely use them the way that they're intended. Now, this is something that I found, like at the end of our unit, uh, our teacher with our charter school had this, and I asked if we could have it since, you know, we're doing our ancient Rome unit. And so we, we got this with, at the end. So there was no way that we were gonna go back and do any of these projects, but we actually did this project and it's in my son's main lesson book and I'll show you that a little bit later. What I use these books for is for inspiration for our own projects because I'm not really interested in in putting the book together the way that it shows you here because we uh, this is a great idea if you are not a crafty person and you just need something that is pre-printed that you can cut color and paste and assemble. This is fabulous because I am all about hands-on projects. I really feel that that gives the students something that's, that's memorable. And even if they don't remember all the content, the whole activity is memorable. So this A+, plus, definitely a good thing. The reason why it doesn't work for us is that we tend to do our projects a, a little bit differently. We tend to be a little bit more involved with them and we tend to create from scratch rather than with pre-printed material. But if you need an activity book, I recommend this one unless you're totally crafty and you're inspired by Pinterest posts on ancient Roman history. Ancient Science, this is a book that if you were looking for a way to incorporate other subjects into your history unit, then I would recommend this book. And we only did one project from here, but I am hoping that we can do more when we get into our science projects, especially when there's ones for like say our physics main lesson block or our astronomy main lesson block that is that are going to overlap with content that we would have done with our ancient Roman main lesson block. We just didn't get a chance to get to it, but it's not like we don't intend to in the future. We just may end up doing them with our science main lesson blocks rather than with our history main lesson blocks. All right, so the next books I wanna show you have to do with gladiators or the armies and fighting and the armies of the past this book we've had in our homeschool library for many years and it has come in handy for sure it goes into a ton of detail all about the um i guess the traditions and the etiquette of of fighting in a roman army i really like this book because it is really detailed rather than say the osborne's book of romans where you will find a two to four page spread maybe even more on you know battles and the armor and uh you know the the um what do you call them the leaders of the army what do you call those the admirals the leaders Instead of just going over a little bit of information that you would get in a book like that, you end up getting a lot of detailed information in a book like this. Now, this has its pros and cons. This may be like way too much information for the unit that you're doing, or you might have a student that's totally 
just really interested in this particular part of Roman history and it is the thing that carries him through the entire unit. I like books that are going to have enough content that are written in an engaging way that have beautiful illustrations or pictures because then for me that's a that's a win whether we you know, even if you don't have a balanced unit and you have a ton on this particular subject area and not a lot on something else, if it's an engaging book, you're going to get more bang for your buck and that's going to be something good for me. So I would, I would recommend if you find books like this that are, you know, this well done, I would add them to your unit. All right, so uh, new for this unit this year is the You Wouldn't Want to Be a Roman Gladiator. I'm really, really enjoying these books. If you have watched my channel for any period of time, you know that I've been raving about these books ever since we got our hands on our first one. I was initially turned off by these books because of the kind of the silliness of them. A lot of times I have been pleasantly surprised and completely wrong about some books and this is definitely one of them. I love the content. I love the silly illustrations. They're totally not ones that I would like normally, but they match the book perfectly. The All the silly captions around the edge really lend themselves to kind of a lighthearted approach on usually heavy subjects. And then in the the body of the content is the more serious part. So I love that balance. I just, I like that you can finish this book and you have learned something. I like that the content is easy to understand and I really like that it's engaging. So I really like these books. I definitely put it like if you were putting together a unit study, I would definitely incorporate those wherever you found um, books that matched that subject area. All right, we're gonna go into these two books on uh, city, you know, architecture, whatnot. We did not read this one this time around. We did read this one as a read aloud, cover to cover. The last time we did this unit, I found that it was just a little bit too much content and a little bit slow to read this one from cover to cover. I think that you can't really just pick this book up and read a little bit. It really deserves to be read from cover to cover. But in the future, if I did this book again and I wanted to focus on this one, I would include some hands-on projects, some drawing, some coloring, uh, maybe even building your own model of uh, you know any of the architectural features that are shown in this book in order for it to have a just a place to anchor itself in the child. I felt like it was just a little bit too much to read this one cover to cover and not have any hands-on projects to go along with it. I really do like these books. I would recommend it with that caveat of adding something to it to make it a, a not quite so heavy. Unless you have a child that's really into architecture, then this book will be fantastic. Uh, we did not end up using this book even though I had only uh, you know, tagged a couple of pages that I wanted to do. We didn't get to any of them. I did read this a little bit on my own and I found this very interesting just as background information, but we didn't get an opportunity to really incorporate it too much into our lessons other than a little bit on the arches, but that's that was about it. All right, we have The Secrets of Pompeii and You Wouldn't Want to Live in Pompeii. And oh my goodness, we have one more book. Let me go grab it because it's not here right now. All right, so here is that other book on Pompeii. Now, this is one that we did the last time we did this unit and is very detailed, but it is not as engaging as, for instance, this book right here. This is gonna give you a lot of content, a, a lot of details, a lot of background information. And of course, it comes with illustrations and some photographs as well. I found this one to be a little bit dry and a little bit too much information, but again, this you could read sections of this without reading it cover to cover, but again, if I were to do this one again, I would pair it with some hands-on activities or I would pair it with this book and do some cooking because for some reason, there's, it just, it, that seems, I think to, it would have worked well <laughs> to add some cooking with this with this book. So I did add this into our lesson plan, but I didn't require my son to read it. I did have it available for him when he did do his entry on Vesuvius and Pompeii, but he kind of just went through it a little bit. He didn't read it cover to cover. He did read these ones though. This is You Wouldn't Want to Live in Pompeii, another one of those You Wouldn't Want to Be books. So this is another one that he got a lot of information out of and was really easy to read. 
and the secret the secrets of Pompeii this one was a new one for this unit this is a book that you can easily find something similar or exactly the same at your local library you don't really need to add this into your personal library this was really affordable and I do like having a good collection of nonfiction books for our our unit studies and this this fit the bill so we did get this it has just enough to go through and give you a good understanding of the the time period and what happened but it's kind of dry but it's so short it you know you don't have a, an, enough time to like totally dislike it I hope that makes sense anyway um that is that one and then the last book I want to show you is uh, Cooking in World Cultures, Food and Cooking in Ancient Rome. And I really like this series. We now have it for Ancient uh, Greece and Ancient Egypt. And with both of those books, we did the all the recipes that came in the book. And I love, love, love adding food to whatever units that we can do. I think it's just, a, it's great, it's memorable, it's educational. So we're almost done with this book called Food and Cooking in Ancient Rome. And when we're done, we're gonna go ahead and make our ingredient list and we're gonna make as many of these recipes next week. Uh, the sad thing is, we did not do any of the uh, the recipes in this book. And my kids are a little bit miffed that we didn't get to that. So that is definitely on the list for the summer. However, I've got a tall order. I've got, you know, big, um, what do you call that? Big standards to reach. Uh, because we did this the last time we did our ancient Roman unit and we did a, a recipe, a meal that had, a, we took a lot of liberties with our meal and it was loosely based on the resources that we had, but then we didn't have all the ingredients and we just kind of also added a salad to it and, you know, things that the ancient Romans didn't have. The thing is, is that yes, it wasn't, uh, historically accurate. That video is linked down in the description box below. You can take a look at it. It's also linked at the end of this video. And the thing is, is that it didn't matter that it wasn't historically accurate. My kids loved it and they still talk about it to this day. So the thing is, is that, is that I feel that you can take some liberties and get the spirit of the lesson or the spirit of of whatever project you're doing and still get so much benefit from it even if you're not being a stickler for the details so for this one because i you know go ahead and check out that video and also go ahead and read the comments because the comments are they're they're both helpful and they're also very critical yes i know because i didn't do this as authentically as I should have. And so a lot of the comments are like, you know, ancient Romans didn't have this and you didn't find this at this time and this is not from this time period and this is not from this region. And yes, that is all true. And so this time around I thought, well, I'm gonna go with something that's way more authentic. I'm going with a published recipe book. And so we still wanna do this. We wanna add to that playlist. We wanna do this, uh, this meal. And whenever that gets posted, it'll be part of that playlist. All right, so I wanna show you how we ended up doing the writing for this unit and we did a lot of it using this scroll paper. And my son had a great time writing with a fountain pen and a quill. I wanna show you the very first one we did with a quill that we either bought or we made. And then it, it was just too cumbersome. And so then he went and he just wrote with uh, a fountain pen. And he did a ton of writing because it was just so much fun to do that. I have never gotten that much writing out of him. And then after we did, this was in the first two to three weeks, he did all this writing. And then we transitioned into the main lesson book because I didn't quite know how to add these into the main lesson book. So the content in the, in the main lesson book for the first like six lessons, the the written narration is actually dictation. And then after that, it is his own narration that follows all the content that he did in his scroll. So let me grab his main lesson book and show you what he did. All right, so it's time for me to show you the main lesson book that my son did. These main lesson books are available at Waldorf uh, vendors. This one happens to just have blank pages, but you can also get ones that are a little bit smaller that have blank pages and also line pages. But I prefer to go for this this one because the pages are a little bit larger and I can easily just add in some lines where we need them. And so I prefer to have still for this age, a little bit more area to draw and to write. So the beginning pages, we got a lot of the illustration inspiration from the main lesson book. And then, uh, and I think 
into a couple of the lessons, there were still images that we took from the book. There, there are not illustrations for every single lesson. So this is one that he just made up on his own. I did not do any chalk drawings or any illustrations for this unit at all, but I did help him and I'll show you how I did a little bit later. All right, so we're diving into our main lesson for the day and we're gonna start off with some drawing because we've already reviewed this story, Romulus and the Founding of Rome. So I helped my son by gently outlining in pencil so still a lot of the content at this point is dictation or copy work that was within the main lesson book. So you can see at the beginning of the book, there are some illustrations here that my son uh, wrote into his main lesson book. You can see that that one looks almost exactly the same right there. And then there are some entries where there aren't illustrations, but you can see that there are some writing and dictation exercises. There's also just the content for the lesson as well as uh, if you need any additional content you can get from one of the resource books, but there isn't always a drawing. So for this one there was, and I believe that was the one that he did over here, and then as we progressed there, we, we took some liberties, but we did try to, to stick as closely as we could to some of these these lessons because I find that the curriculum is really well done. It has a nice mix of the history, the culture, some of like the language, the rules, the architecture, and I, and I like that balance rather than just doing a main lesson book entirely out of like historical events that you're just narrating and drawing. All right, so this is another illustration that he did on his own. What I did for these ones is that I would definitely write in the lines and I'd also really lightly pencil out what the image would look like. And so again, for this one, I just kind of, I kind of made the horizon, gave him a couple lines and then told him what would be good as a drawing. And then he did the entire drawing on his own. This one was out of the book. You can see that the other complication that we had was that sometimes the drawings are horizontal and we were using like a vertical oriented uh, main lesson book. So you can see there's like a lot of extra space here and there and that's not a big deal. It's just not as uh, visually pleasing as when you're actually matching the book, you know, with, with the type of main lesson book that you have. Again, there was writing a dictation. So that's what he wrote. Again, for this one, I outlined the image and then he drew it in. And this one, again, I, I outlined the majority of it and then he did the writing, but he then did the horse and the carriage and the people. And he left the heads off of most of the people. That was something that he, he chose to do and I was fine with. Uh, again, no heads <laughs> on any of the people. And this is another one that I sort of drew out for him. This one, I drew out like one or two of them and I showed him how to do these different tables, these different tablets with the laws written on them. Again, helped him out with this one. He found this one a little bit challenging to do. For the map, we used one of the maps that I showed you previously. And then uh, this was for Hannibal and, and uh, the route that he took in order to invade Italy or the Roman Empire. And then we had Caesar. There were two images here of people that this was also out of the book, but he chose not to do them. They were a little bit complicated, but the rest of the image was pretty simple. I did not outline the entire image for him. I only just helped him with the bridge, but everything else he did on his own. And by this point, actually uh, earlier on, by probably around this point was the last entry that we had where everything kind of went one after the other pretty well. So we had the seven kings and we had the beginning of the republic, but then there were way more entries than we had pages for. And for me, I wasn't about to get out like a whole nother main lesson book in order to get those other entries in. For us, the main lesson ends when we have no more pages. So he's happy about that. So while we still had several lessons on the ending of the Republic, as well as the the kings, the emperor, I'm sorry, the emperors that followed during the empire and the fall of Rome. We do not have any other entries for that. We have Pompeii and Vesuvius, and then this last one that he's still in the process of writing. This is just a uh, bird's eye view of the entire history for the three different parts of ancient Roman history. So that is the main lesson book 
And let me grab the last thing I want to show you. All right, it's time for me to reveal which book I would suggest if you could only buy one of them, although I do recommend getting both of them. However, that doesn't work really well within a unit because the content is so similar, but I would choose The Story of the Romans over Ancient Rome by Charles Kovacs in part because it is a really engaging, really detailed view, mostly detailed view of you know, Roman history, even though there are some parts that are more detailed in the Charles Kovacs book. I found this also to be broken up in really easy chapters, but at the same time, so is this one. I don't like ones that have super long chapters, and these ones also have really short chapters. So to be fair, both of them have short chapters. The size of the text, now if you were to assign this to your child, I feel like this is a better book to assign to a student versus this being a better book. Well, actually both of them could be resource materials, and both of them could be uh, read-alouds, but if you were to assign either book to your student, I would recommend this one uh, to assign to your student because the the font is larger, there's more space, and the chapters are really short, making it a little bit more attainable for a child to read through. All right, so I think that covers the entire unit. Don't forget that you can tap on the screen right now to see the complete playlist for our Ancient Rome unit as well as some of the other units that we have. Don't forget that you can find more information at the blog post that accompanies this video. That link is down in the description box below. And if you want to see what we're up to on a daily basis, don't forget that you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.